Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. XRP is storing value. XRP itself is a store of value, period. And I'm going to make my case on this. Despite uh, scary sounding headlines like this one from you today, massive XRP crash. What's next? Oh, yes, that's right. XRP has crashed to price levels not seen since four days ago, literally. <laughs> But the reason I wanted to highlight this is because there's some silly ass stuff being stated by people from Vanguard. Now, Vanguard, you may recall, uh, when, when the Bitcoin ETFs got approved, they said, no, no, we're not going to let that be purchased by our clients. Nya, nya, nya. That's what I think they sound like anyway. Um, that, that's what was coming out of their face holes anyway. That was the message. Uh, stupid much? <laughs> and then you can look at how much money's flowed in, but, but it's so principled. They're protecting their clients. From what? From massive profits during a bull run? You idiot sticks. But it, it's not just that. It's, it's, they literally are stating that Bitcoin itself is not a store of value because it's too volatile. So what I'm going to do is destroy that argument. And while doing so, I will argue that, well, Bitcoin certainly is a store of value because that's how people are treating it. And so is XRP unquestionably. But before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a financial background of any kind. I am not offering financial advice, and you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. All right, here's the Investopedia website. An article from March 25th, 2022. Store of value, definition, how assets work and examples. Let's just look at the key takeaways. That's sufficient for the purposes of this video. They got three bullet points. Number one, a store of value is an asset that maintains its value rather than depreciating. Two, gold and other precious metals are good stores of value because shelf lives are essentially perpetual. Three, a nation's currency must be a reasonable store of value for its economy to function smoothly. So here's the interesting thing about that. That definition, I think most people would take that at face value and be like, yeah, that sounds right. That's probably about what a store value is. Um, there's nothing on the planet that meets that criteria. Did you know that? <laughs> because and they even cite gold in one of the examples. Gold doesn't meet that criteria. I will show you. Just hang with me. It's like literally by this standard, gold's not, uh, gold's not a store of value. And so he here's the deal. What it comes down to when we say store of value, we have as individual humans this vague idea of what that means. Um, but... You know, what's the litmus test to determine what is an actual store of value? Who's in charge of it? Is it an orga organization that's in charge of decreeing it? And if so, who gave them power? And is that agreed upon the world over? Well, obviously not. There is no such thing. And so uh, you're going to have different people with different ideas of what that means. And that's, that's a lot of what human language is. We use words and we all have a rough idea of what it means. But if you actually ask various humans to break down a definition of multiple words, you're going to find that there are a broad range of understandings of what these words mean, even though we're able to function as a society on a daily basis. It's no different with store value. That's exactly what's happening here. So what is it? In the end, I mean, the truth kind of is like how, how you treat any term or word. It's like it's whatever we say it is, basically, because technically all words are made up. All phrases are made up. So I, I was curious, though. I wanted to know in the XRP community, do you think are, are, do you think XRP is a store of value? Do you, like, are you holding XRP as a store of value? And so I put out this poll and this is an old poll. November 16th, 2022. So this is right after FTX collapsed. And here, I ran this poll on social media platform X. I wrote, this poll is for current XRP holders only. Is holding XRP as a store of value at least one of the reasons you own it? Doesn't need to be your primary reason, if so. Just at least one of the reasons. Please consider retweeting so we get a larger sample size. Thanks all. And we got 5,728 votes, which is a pretty reasonable sample size. And, um, and yes was the, an the overwhelming answer. 66.3% of voters said, yes, XRP, I'm, I'm holding it as a store value, value. That's at least one of my reasons I'm holding it. Yes, 66.3%. Only 18.2% said no. And then there was a third option I included in case people, you know, came in and maybe they, if they weren't XRP holders, but they, but they wouldn't see the results, they could just click show results. I was hoping that would skew it less. That's the reason I had that there. 15.6% of, of respondents voted show results. So, overwhelming. So if you just look at, you know, the yes versus no, that is gigantic. If you consider that yes and no are the only actual XRP holders, which might be the case, 
I mean, overwhelming. I mean, you're, you're talking over 75% of respondents uh, holding XRP say, yeah, I'm doing it because it's a store of value. In fact, there is this post from XRP community member Panos, and he wrote to me in response to this and said, it's the number one reason, store of value and generational wealth. Then it's for using it as a currency, medium of exchange, and for payments, and soon for DeFi apps and passive income. Yeah, and I think that's spot on. I think that's what most people believe. That's, that, that's how humans are actually behaving. Uh, somebody else responded. To me, so actually, it's a separate thread. So this is November 19th. I wrote, in the physical world, there are many things that are stores of value, from precious metals to commodities. Yet inexplicably, in the digital world, the only store of value is Bitcoin. That's what the Bitcoin maximalists say. The answer is no. And I've seen uh, maximalists, like, for instance, Anthony Pompliano, he stated that the only, the only store of value in the entire crypto asset class is Bitcoin. Now, this is just echo chamber nonsense from... Uh, from Bitcoin maxis, you expect to hear bogus nonsense stuff like this that's not insightful. Uh, so I pushed back on it, of course. But uh, somebody responded to me named XRP number one and wrote, a store of value normally retains its value. There are currently no cryptocurrencies outside stable coins that can say that. Bitcoin can't be a store of value if it's less than a third of its all-time high. Neither can XRP. And so... There are a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot to be said about that. So here's how I responded though. And I shared this chart at the time. It's not labeled. I wrote, is an asset with a chart like the one below, which occurs over a long period of time, a store of value. And I'll just let you know what that is right now, even though it's not labeled. That's gold. Now I'm going to circle back around because there's a lot to say about this and it's very fascinating and it's going to arm you with ammo. If anybody ever comes to you, and argues that Bitcoin or XRP or pick your cryptocurrency is not a store of value and they say gold is, uh, I got some serious ammo for you. Just sit tight, though, because I'm going to have to circle back around. I want to do this in a particular order. And then I wrote, on your point about stable coins, currencies that are losing their value are not stores of value. The U.S. dollar is therefore not a store of value. That also means that stable coins backed by the U.S. dollar are not stores of value because they are also losing their value. And so look, very clearly, um, I would argue that Bitcoin or XRP way greater at being store of value than a stable coin backed by the dollar, which is losing purchasing power. I mean, the dollar in the last 100 years, it's lost like 99% of its purchasing power, literally. It's absurd because it's getting debased. It's just printed into oblivion. That's exactly what's happening here. No, the dollar is not a store of value. I mean, look at even re in recent years, especially, we've had notably high inflation with trillions of dollars getting printed, uh, printed out, out of nowhere. Very clearly, right? And then, um, and then in response to the chart that I, I didn't label, and again, I told you it's gold, uh, I, I said, uh, you know, you know is, this, is this a store value, something with this chart? And then he responded to me and said, depends what you consider a long period of time. Crypto hasn't been around long enough to prove itself as a true store of value compared to something like gold. Okay, so that's subjective. I'd say at that, so now uh, uh, crypto's been around 15 years. At that point, you know, uh, coming up on, you know, 14 years at that point, almost 14 years. I'd say that's a pretty long time. That's subjective, though. So I responded to him and I said, the chart I showed you was gold price dating back about 40 years. Highly volatile. There are multiple points in time when you could have bought gold and have been at a loss for over a decade. Volatility is part of any asset used as a store of value. And uh, I'm going to play with a separate chart in just a sec, so sit tight because it might blow your little mind. Because even though gold has been pushing up recently against new all-time highs, in terms of purchasing power, if you factor inflation, uh, no. No, it is not anywhere close to that, actually. And that's what actually matters. Gold has been devastating for some people from one generation to the next. Just sit tight and I will show you. Uh, so, you know, the fact that there's that volatility and the next RP is volatility and Bitcoin has volatility. No, like everything's going to be volatile. Nothing is static, period. You should not expect that with anything, even if you believe it's a store of value, period. I also wrote, I think a very important question is how are humans actually behaving? Why are they actually making purchasing decisions? That's a bigger determining factor of whether or not something is a store of value than whether or not there is volatility. Many people are purchasing cryptocurrencies as a store of value. If you look at the fact that this asset class went from $0 to an all-time high of $3 trillion in a little over a decade, I think people are right to act in this way. But it's silly to think of only Bitcoin as a store of value. 
But really, it's not just that I think people are right to act in this way. More importantly, they are acting in this way, which is what makes the idea true. And so, folks, I don't care what Investopedia says, their takeaways, and I like Investopedia, it's a fine website, it's wrong. But again, they're not in charge. They don't, they don't get to rule the world and determine what the hell a store value is. They're sharing their opinion on their website. And a lot of, you can find a lot of websites that would more or less agree. But in, in practice, what they're saying, it, it doesn't, like, there isn't an asset that passes their own litmus test then, as I said. If that's the litmus test, it doesn't make sense. Which is why you, I, I, I say, if you want to know what's a store of value, go ask the people. And that's what I was doing. I was asking the XRP community, like, do you believe that what you're holding XRP, like, because it's a store of value, is that a reason? Even if it's a small part, is that a reason? Overwhelmingly, yes. That is what people are doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm at, I, I pers- I, when I bought XRP in 2017, absolutely. And it's, it's volatile AF. I totally get it. And I was down for the first few years. Okay, got it. But it still has stored value over the long haul. It's been, it's, it's trended up. It has. Then there's this, um, and this is kind of funny. This is from on-chain analyst Will Clemente. And I'm going to get back into the gold stuff in just a second because you, you guys really need to see this. But I, this is kind of funny, so I highlighted this. And this picture has been circulating on, on X recently in, in the world of crypto. It's a picture of what uh, people are calling a TradFi guy or a traditional finance guy. And you can see he's got his little, looks like a little Patagonia vest and all that. And he's got his little coffee there. That's what, <laughs> so it's like supposed to be the stereotype of tra- TradFi guys, I guess. And so Will Clemente shared that picture and wrote, Bitcoin, best performing asset of the last decade? Clearly not a store of value. And how about that volatility? You may be up over 50% year to date, but look at that 4% drawdown today. Irresponsible to hold. I'll stay put in my mutual funds. And that's basically the attitude of Vanguard, right? That's basically the attitude. It's completely ridiculous. So look at gold. Here's a gold chart. This is an all-time gold chart going back uh, past 19 dickety two. It's that old. And, and so it's, we got all years on here, right? Um, and this is inflation adjusted because that's what actually matters. So in, you know, in, in terms of like, what can you actually do? And I'll show, here's the, the one, if it's not inflation adjusted, this is what it shows. So like, if you, if you look in terms of absolute dollars, um, it's, it's up. It's like been hitting all-time highs recently. Fine. But that doesn't matter because in terms of actual purchasing power, uh, you, you got to account for inflation, right? And so look at this. Adjusted for inflation here. Bitcoin was at $2,704.42 in January of 1980. $2,704 in January of 1980. Now, fast forward 20 years. You know, go back a l- here a little over 20 years. Almost 21 years. November 2000. It was down to $474.03 in purchasing power. That's right. From about $2,700, accounting for inflation, which is what actually matters, from $2,700 down to about $470. So, you know, and that's a long enough time that if you had a bunch of gold and you were transferring that down as what you believe to be generational wealth and you, you, you trade that down to your children, the next generation, they're screwed because from $2,700, this is a percentage calculator decrease, 2700 bucks uh, down to 40, 470 bucks that's an over an 82% decrease 82% in two decades down I'm sorry gold's a what a store of value says who are you out of your damn mind that doesn't make any sense of course it doesn't make any sense that like and you say well you got to look over the long haul 20 years is the long haul that that's that's definitely the long haul and yeah, it's been trending up, but you could the same argument applies. With something this volatile, how can it possibly be reasonable to consider it a safe store of value? This is gold we're talking about. In everybody's minds, they've got this idea of planted gold, store of value. But nobody's looked at the damn numbers, which is what I'm showing you right now. That's why this whole argument's absurd. And so you can look at, so, okay, you know, look at what happened at the end of 2000, again, 470 bucks. Fast forward to... Uh, July 2011, 2,216 bucks. That's insane volatility. If XRP is not a store of value, then neither is gold, period. That's garbage. And XRP has been around over a decade now. And gold has been around over, uh, you know, or uh, XRP, uh, Bitcoin rather, has been around you know 15 years. And gold, if you look in terms of adjusting for inflation, it never has hit a new all-time high in 40, over 40 years, 44 years now, folks. 
It's never hit a new all-time high in 44 years adjusted for inflation. It's a what? A store of value? Are you sure about that? And let's look further, though. So then from July 2011, go <laughs> fast forward from July 2011 to uh, call it what? December 2015, it's worth 1400 bucks. So from 2200 bucks down to 1400 bucks. How can you count on this? Store of value, my rear side? Absolutely not. And then, of course, it pops back to the upside, you know. 2,362 bucks. It, it, you get the point, though. And even if you want to... So if, but if you want to look at this, and I think this is less meaningful, but if you want to look at the if, adjusted for inflation, it's still insanely volatile. I mean, look at this. January 1980, 677 bucks. 20 years later, you know, 260 bucks, something like that. So still lost over half its value. Like, that's how bad it is. And then it rockets back up and goes back down. So whether you look at inflation adjusted or not... I mean, it's still, what I'm saying is true regardless. Is That's the point I'm making. Completely ridiculous, right? And so then you get Vanguard here. There's this video clip that's been circulating today from a Bitcoin Magazine chair. Just in. $7.2 trillion Vanguard CEO Tim Buckley says they're not going to offer spot Bitcoin ETFs, un quote, unless the asset class changes, end quote. And then he said, quote, Bitcoin is just too volatile and it's not a store of value, end quote. Oh, it's not uh, too volatile. Like gold, you mean? Or what about the dollar having lost 99% of its purchasing power literally in about 100 years? And it keeps going in that direction. In fact, it's accelerating in that direction. What the hell is a store of value then? You bunch of idiot sticks. Got your damn minds. And now you know. You are armed with knowledge. And knowledge is power. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon Lambo.